Are you planning a large-scale drip tape irrigation system? The bigger the scale, the bigger the problems. Today, we're going to cover the three biggest mistakes to avoid when installing drip tape on a large agricultural irrigation system. To help us with this, we invited Ed from Irritech. Come down and join us and explain some of the mistakes he sees in the agricultural side of things. By the end of this video, you'll understand the biggest mistakes to avoid when installing drip tape on an agricultural scale. The first mistake to avoid is cutting your tape with the drip tape applicator during installation. We install tape through things we call shanks, and the shanks can be tore up. Shanks could have burrs in them. And so as we bring our tape down through the shank to go into the ground, there'll be burrs or things like that inside these steel shanks. As the tape comes down the shank and then wants to come flat into the ground, there's a lot of pressure there. It's rubbing on the inside wall of that shank. Any kind of abrasion on that shank, the fender of the mill tape, as they rub against that under tension, it just, it's like a little knife cut. So we fire it up for the first time, we have leaks. So much of it goes right back to the shanks. Be sure to do a thorough inspection of your installation equipment prior to installing. You'll want to monitor the shank during the entire installation process just to make sure no debris like rocks or twigs or anything like that gets pulled up in and cuts hundreds of feet of tape. Be cautious of any abrasion damage. The second mistake is twisting tape. As tape comes down the shank, sometimes it twists inside the shank. And so if it twists, there's no more water downstream of it. So it's coming off of the spool. And as it's coming down, it is getting a chance to flop over. Once right. it flops over and it goes in the ground there, we actually have a twist in that tape. It blocks the flow rate downstream. Right. That's a shank issue. There's a lot of things that they fix that with. We have things called rollers, both at the top and the bottom, which it will introduce the tape into it. And between the rollers at the top and the rollers at the bottom, it will not allow the tape to ever flip. As we plant our tape, we constantly dig. You'll always but, notice IRP1 Ultra, there's stripes on it. Stripes yes. are on there to let us know what's up and what's down. If I'm laying down my tape and I dig a little bit out of the way to look at my tape, I see my stripes up great. But then I go up that same line, two, 300 feet, and I dig down and then my stripes are down. I yeah. twist it, right? The biggest thing is there is to let us know, did our tape twist on us? You know, and then what's the emitter side up? A lot of that is, is so when the system shuts down, our emitters are up. If our tape is turned down and our emitters are down, we're wallowing in dirty water. It's when the system shuts right. down, it's trying to pull a vacuum a little bit and yep. it's always setting in that pool of mud and dirt and everything in the ground. And so, yes, we definitely want our emitters up and that's a lot of the reason why the stripes are there. Prior to injection, inspect the shank and roller system in its entirety. Monitor the entire injection process, particularly the roller, to make sure the tape is still on there with the appropriate amount of tension. You don't want it to get too loose or it could cause problems during your installation process. And the third mistake, too much tape tension. Another problem that we would have is we stretch the tape too much. So we have some heavy soils, the equipment's traveling too fast. And so as we put that tape down and our spools have the tensioning devices on them. And these tensioning devices, they are set to either be softer, less tension or more tension. That really relates to the ground speed of what you're traveling. And so if I've got a lot of tension back on my spools and I'm wanting to travel too fast, I physically am stretching my tape. It absolutely affects that path flow. On our P1 Ultra line, it affects the emitter as it is bonded to the tape itself, right? It, right. We're actually stretching that tape. Right. And so we're causing issues there. Big ag growers tend to run a thinner mill tape. Right. It's an economics issue. And they're usually going to replace their tape every year because they want that path flow to be the cleanest it is. And that's the day the tape was installed, is the cleanest it's ever going to be. And so they tend to run too fast. And there are tensioning devices on these really neat shank systems that allow the speed of the spool to always put some back tension against it. The rate of the speed of the tractor's traveling. They'll have them too tight. They'll be traveling too fast. And once the tape goes in the ground, it'll literally stretch that tape. Like a bar of taffy. Oh, yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. And the thinner the product, the thinner mill the tape is, the more that causes an issue to you. Too much tension affects the flow path, and it can even displace your emitters through stretching the tape. This occurs when you travel too fast while injecting the tape or have the tension device on the spool too tight. This is something to really account for when you switch from a thicker wall tape to a thinner wall tape. This can be further exacerbated through thermal expansion and contraction cycles. Once you're done with the installation, you should have just a little bit of slack at the end to help with those thermal expansion and contraction cycles. The more acreage you put in with tape, the more you want to spend on your tape applicators. Right. It's like right. pickup trucks. There's some really, really good pickup trucks out there and there's not some good pickup trucks. Hey, yeah. And if you absolutely rely on your pickup truck, you're going to want to buy a really good pickup truck. Right. It's the exact same thing in our tape applicators. It's going to relieve the number of problems that you're going to fight in the field. The more acres you're farming, you justify that more expensive equipment that does a better job pretty quickly. 
These are the most costly mistakes to watch out for when using drip tape on an agricultural scale, but by no means is it everything to know. If you'd like to learn more about using drip tape on farm-sized applications, check out our Farming with Drip Tape playlist here.